The banking industry is plagued by rumors of conspiracies, with the Rothschilds family empire shrinking in recent decades. JP Morgan, however, has grown significantly, managing $3 trillion in assets and holding $25.45 trillion in custody through its investments and corporate arm. JP Morgan was instrumental in pushing the government to create the Federal Reserve, which is now the center of contemporary plots. As the most important bank in the United States for over a century, JP Morgan's influence is undeniable. In this video, we will look at how JP Morgan built the biggest bank in the world and how he also got the government to build the FED. John Pierpont Morgan, born in 1837 in Hartford, Connecticut, began his career in banking at the age of 20. His father, J.S. Morgan, had established the business banking company Peabody Morgan & Company, which was already established by his father. The U.S. was an emerging market, with Europeans investing heavily in the U.S. due to their belief in the future of trains. Morgan, however, was cautious about investing in anything due to the market's potential bubble-like nature. Despite this, he managed to secure funding from Europe to invest in the railroad through American businesses, including personally running trains across the country. Morgan believed in big businesses as they made them more competitive and allowed for scale savings. He took over J.S. Morgan & Company in 1890 and planned to buy Carnegie Steel and work with other companies in the steel, coal, mining, and shipping industries. J.P. Morgan founded the U.S. Steel Corporation, the first company to reach $1 billion in market worth. This enabled them to cut prices and compete with European companies on a global scale. He also played a significant role in the merger of Edison Electric and its competitors to form General Electric. Morgan believed that economies of scale could help businesses save money by going big. He also helped start AT&T and other businesses, making J.P. Morgan one of the strongest banks in the world. Morgan's reputation as a good banker attracted people to his businesses, but there were also challenges. Well, after decades of very fast growth, the bubble finally burst and the stock market crashed. It shattered the American economy into many pieces. It looked like every bank would fail, even the big ones. Companies couldn't pay back the loans, and the U.S. didn't have a central bank at the time to help them. Morgan took over and made things go on. He promised a lot of his own money and got other New York bankers to promise the same amount. Without him, things would have been worse. It did, however, show how much control one banker has over the whole American economy. So, it was clear that the government had to step in and manage the money. In 1913, the Federal Reserve was set up. Not long after J.P. Morgan died, the J.P. Morgan Company kept growing. During the First World War, it was very important. But after the war ended, the world was hit with another banking crisis. It was almost 10 years of the Great Depression, and Congress did nothing to help the economy. One of the things they did was pass the Banking Act of 1933, which split business banks from investment banks. This meant that J.P. Morgan & Company had to dissolve. But J.P. Morgan had to join with a number of other banks over the course of the century in order to grow to the size and power it has now. Chase Manhattan Bank is likely the most well-known of them. It was formed by the merger of two other large banks, Chase National Bank and the Bank of Manhattan Company. It was established in 1799 and is one of the oldest banks in U.S. history. Chemical Bank Corporation was another bank that was giving them a lot of competition. Back in 1823, when it was first started, the company made chemicals. But just a year later, it started working in banks. In the 1980s and 1990s, after more than 100 years, it was the leader in its field. Do you remember Chase Manhattan Bank? Even though it had done well, the real estate crash made it much weaker. So in 1996, it combined with Chemical Bank to become the largest bank in the country. Not only did the biggest banks in the U.S. get married, but they also had to deal with tough competition. Goldman Sachs, Morgan Stanley, and Chase Manhattan Bank all had to find ways to beat them. So in December 2000, 
Chase Manhattan, and J.P. Morgan combined to form J.P. Morgan Chase and Company, which is now the biggest bank in the United States. It might have seemed like that was the end of mergers and that these banks would no longer grow, but that wasn't the case. Jamie Dimon joined J.P. Morgan when it bought Chicago-based Bank One Corporation for $58 billion in stock in 2004. He would go on to become CEO and lead the company to where it is now. Even though J.P. Morgan was strong enough to save the country from the financial crisis of 2007, the bank is now made up of several large U.S. banks that have merged. These include Chase Manhattan Bank, Bank One, Bear Stearns, Washington Mutual, Chemical Bank, Manufacturing Hanover, First Chicago Bank, National Bank of Detroit, Texas Commerce Bank, Providian Financial, and Great Western Bank. The world was hit by another disaster, just like in 1907. There was another stock market crash in 2008, but this time it was much worse. One business after another went out of business, even big ones like Lehman Brothers. Bear Stearns, the fifth largest bank in the U.S., lost almost half, 47% of its value and was about to go off the rails. Like in 1907, there was a central bank, the Federal Reserve, to save the economy this time. That was a great chance for J.P. Morgan Chase. The government saved Bear Stearns by giving J.P. Morgan Chase $29 billion to buy the company. This kept such a big bank from going bankrupt. They tried to buy a bank for about $230 million, but each share was only worth $2 when it was worth more than $100 before the crisis. It didn't work out, so they paid $10 each, and J.P. Morgan was bigger and better after the crisis. There are some problems with J.P. Morgan. They were involved in a number of scams. They had to pay fines and court settlements, totaling more than $2 billion for their part in helping Enron Corp sell fake stocks. In fact, they had to pay an extra $2.2 billion to settle a case brought by Enron investors. There were so many cases and controversies surrounding it that we can't cover them all in this video. But J.P. Morgan Chase is probably just how J.P. Morgan imagined the company to be. He was a big fan of mergers, and the company got where it is today by buying or merging with other banks. Now, it's your turn. What do you think? Should banks be able to keep joining and getting bigger, or should the government step in and put limits on them? Let us know what you think in the comments, and send it to your friends as well. Don't forget to click the bell icon and subscribe to our channel so you never miss a new video.